So good evening everyone. <coughs> it's uh it's Tuesday the eleventh of December. <coughs> and uh, we've got the loft here there just trying to fill the water in the boat. Um and I just thought I'd do a quick video, well maybe quick, maybe about ten minutes, I don't know. Uh, about what I believe breeding and how you should breed your boards or what way you should do it. So for me, always the aim is to breed a family of boards that are successful. Okay, and most fellas find that difficult, especially starting out racing, because they get boards up here, there, and everywhere, and you just don't know what you have. So, for me to do that, I know you have a lot of boards here. I'm not just a novice at pigeon racing, or pigeon keeping, I'll say, because I've never really won many races. I've only had a couple of like. I have kept the families of boards I had together. So, I had the Padfield brothers, Jim Donaldson's boards, uh, Marco Wilson's, Frank Hayes. Uh, Nick Harvey's, all individual lines of boards, I never crossed them, uh, even though some lads were crossing them and winning with them, okay? So the idea is to develop the line, and in most, ca in most cases also, the fella who's starting with pigeons, who doesn't know what he's doing, has boards from here, there and everywhere, but, and, and don't get me wrong, those boards could be very successful in some cases, in which case you have to develop a line that's already there. In, in my case, I went after direct children of performance pigeons from already established families with the fanciers that we were, we're with. And that's what we all try to do for the most part, okay? So, where do you go with it and what do you do? Most cases and most fanciers will only have one or two exceptional boards. Even if they're racing out of their skin as a team, there's only going to be one or two exceptional, maybe three exceptional boards on the loft of, of 50 to 100 pigeons. Okay? So we want to raise the standard of the average up to that one or two standard. Okay? And the way to do that is to develop a family out of those individual boards. So let's just say fancier A, B, C, D, five fanciers. One has a cock and the other four has very four, four very exceptional heads. But the guy with the cock hasn't got any hands that he thinks are worth putting to this cock to, to really develop a lion. So what you do is, the guy with the cock, or the guy with the hen, can approach a guy with four cocks, it doesn't matter. And you borrow in the cocks and hens, and you develop from this. So you pair your cocks and hens together. So when you want to develop your lion, I'm gonna talk about you having a cock line, okay? You get your cocks and you get your three or four exceptional hens from the other fanciers. You make arrangements that you're going to split the youngsters off each hen with the fancier that owns them. And if you use the bull system that's found on this website here, Safe Haven Lofts uh, YouTube channel, uh, you can easily develop this. So what you do is you take four pair of youngsters off each of the hens, and you give the fancier respective that owns each hen two. So you split the youngsters. You will now have four young four hens to work for hens. You now have four hens, and you have two pair of each hen with your cock. So you theoretically have four from each hen, by two is eight youngsters from your, eight, is six, four from each hen, by four is 16 youngsters off your own cock. Hopefully, you have eight hens in that. You have two hens out of each nest. Now what you need to do is you need to pick the best hen you can out of those towards, and you pair the cock to his daughters, four of his daughters, okay? Now this is where the trick comes in, and this is where most fanciers fall down. We inbreed, but we don't inbreed enough, okay? So all of the reading I've done, all the research I've done, I've checked all of this out. It's about this, what they call genetic coefficient. And getting the genetic coefficient between 42 to 45%, 42 and a half roughly, uh, 43 is where they want it to produce a superstar or to produce something that's similar to the original stud board, whether it be a hen or a cock, okay? So inbred father, daughter, maintenance, or mother, son, maintenance, as if the case is that. And these are where the key lies, the offspring here from the inbred children. You take those inbred children and you breed all of those together. And the key here is that the matings are only, every mating that's made, the only common ancestor, the only common board in each side of the pedigree is that one stud board, whether it be the cocker hill, okay? So you so you have father daughter mates, <clears throat> and from each father daughter mate, if you put the cock on the bolt system again, you can theoretically get 16, eight young boards, four pair of each of the four hens, comfortably. That now gives you 32 youngsters to work with, 
and we will hopefully say that half of those are hens. Okay? When you do father daughter maintenance, it doesn't always work out like that. Sometimes you get more cocks than hens, but that's the way it works. So we'll say theoretically half of them are hens, okay? So now we're in a good spot. Now we have hopefully 16 good hens, four from each of his daughters. Okay? Sorry, 16, you have 32 pigeons from four father daughter mates, okay? Now what you need to do is you need to take a pair of pigeons. So if you have eight off each hen, you try to pick the best two from each hen, okay? The best two out of the 22. That means you're picking eight from 22, and that's gonna leave you with 24 other boards as yearlings. Race away, race away. Might turn into a super performance pigeon. And that one then can be adapted into your breeding system the following year, if that's what you want to do. So, 32 pigeons, you picked eight. You paired them all together, half brothers and sisters. Excuse me. <coughs> you paired them all together, half brothers and sisters. Now this is where the key comes. Those half brother and sister maintenance, out of father daughter maintenance, they're what bring the genetic coefficient up to that required 40%. Now, all the easier children, excuse me. Should have worn my mask. All of the research shows this that that's how you get the genetic coefficient back up. Okay? So now you have again four pair of pigeons, all half brother and sister maintenance, and you again breed 32 youngsters, four from each pair. Four pair of youngsters, eight youngsters from each four pair gives you another 32 youngsters. And again, you take the best eight you can. Okay? <coughs> And you have a choice of what to do with those original four pair from the father daughter means. You put them back on the road, or you keep them and you swap the means <coughs> for the following year, or like I said, something out there, brothers and sisters, turns out to be a super performer, you bring that into the breeding system for the year. It's very simple. But the key is, at that point, every year you breed down. You don't, you can't breed at these, Excuse me. You can't breed aunties and uncles to nephews and nieces later. But let's just keep this first. You need to breed down the research shows <coughs> continuously. And if you continuously breed cousins back together all the time, that's what they end up being, cousins back together. <coughs> From the original pigeons, excuse me about the sneeze. I don't normally sneeze that much. From the original boards, the genetic coefficient, if you don't put that in that symptom, stays at that 43%. That standard is now raised to where you want it to be from the average of the rest of your loft. And then also, when you come down five generations, and then you're looking for a cross into these boards that you have, because you're saying they're maybe a bit too inbred. After five generations, research shows, actually after three generations, research shows, but after five generations, we'll talk because I think it's easier over a five year period, that you can take something that's bred off five generations and either go back to the original stud board or the inbred shield. And once you go back to those, they then become the natural cross to bring back hybrid vigor. And why is that? The reason is that when you start with a genetic base pair and genetic base seeds, once you go down research shows five or six generations, there is enough genetic variation there to actually bring back the hybrid cross. And that's how simple it is, okay? But the problem I find with most fanciers today, and it, well, it's not a problem, most fanciers don't have the time or the wherewithal to plan five years ahead of themselves with their breeding programs. And if you plan a little bit ahead of yourself for your breeding program, and don't just go year to year, which is what most fellas do, and some fellas do year to year exceptionally successful, they do. But if you plan your breeding program over a five year period, and work five years, and persevere with the program, if you want to have other boards on the left, if you want to have several lions going at once, if you have the space for it, go ahead. But if you plan the breeding and work with it, you will get the benefit. And all I can say to you is the most important thing is the starting boards you use. If you start with mediocre boards, that's all you're going to develop. If you start with children of champions, children of very, very successful performers, 
you're, you're on a winner already. That's where the studs come in handy. Studs are brilliant. They serve a purpose. They're there for a business entity. But you can get father, daughter matings or mother, son matings and start at that inbred line I've already mentioned and pair Harper and sister together with only one common ancestor, the stud cocker hen. And it works. Now, predominantly out there at the moment are cock lines. And cock lines are predominant at the moment simply because of all the widowhood racing that was gone on over the last 40 or so years, making it very successful for individuals, and but then thereby the hens just get left aside. Now, more recently we have seen hen lines coming to the fore, especially in the long distance races, whether they be fully widowhood hens or whether the natural boards are being used for the longer distance races, which is which which is is, is also happened from all, all countries really. That's, but widowhood boards now are doing 700 miles, hens and cocks. So so it is possible. So I would appeal to you all that have successful boards. And if you don't have successful boards, source a handful of successful boards. Or negotiate with, if you have one, negotiate with somebody else that has successful boards. Try to develop a line yourself. It's an art we have lost in the pivot sport. Developing your own lines. The Jansons did it. John Arden did it. Brass Payne, Bert Brown is Payne still out there. He did it with Jansen based pigeons. They're still there, Mule Man, the, the Bosch. They're all out there. All of those famous names all started with successful boards from another fancy or forced and then developed their own lines by heavily inbreeding forced to breed them through. And that's how you do it. And it's very simple. And the research is out there. Google it. You know, creating a line of animals, creating a family of animals, creating a strain of animals. That's how we have pedigree dogs, pedigree pigeons. It's all true inbreeding, pedigree cattle. You inbreed to fix the genetics. When you have the genetic fixed, then you crossbreed for hybrid vigor. But you have to fix the genetics first, and that takes years of perseverance. So have a go at it. Try. What have you got to lose? In most cases, nothing but a bit of time. And if you're young in the pigeon sport, and by young I mean my age, 40 odd, you have time. Over a five or 10 year period, you can develop it. And it works. It's been proven in history, we've just lost the art. Great articles out there, Stephen Van Bremen, fantastic articles about how to breed. He started with grandchildren of a pigeon because he couldn't get the, the old clarity. He couldn't get the red children out of that. So he went and he sourced a lot of the grandchildren and put all the grandchildren back together and again did it. It's how they did it. Jansen Brothers, all inbred very heavily. Jan Arden, so heavily inbred, unbelievable. And that's how they do it. They fix the genetics, and then when the genetics is fixed, they breed a bigger pool of boards from those little amounts. And that's where the standard raises. So try it, have a go. I'd love to see some more successful fancies out there, but practice the breeding. Breeding is gold, racing is silver. Have a nice evening.